It is the agenda for the 21st century you're living in today. For a brave new world where everything that you cherished and held true will no longer exist. Turning to Tennessee, where 11 people have now died in historic wildfires, dozens of others have been injured and many remain missing. Crews have put out all the fires, but hotspots are still a threat there. Hundreds of buildings have been torched. You can see that in this video. It's just devastating. And today, many survivors are finally returning home to see if anything is left. If you look at, take a look behind me at this three-story home, what once was a three-story home, Ugh. looks like a bomb just went off. We also know that there were no natural uh, factors, there are no lightning strikes that could have started this. So it's very obvious that this was a human-caused fire. Now, whether it was purposely set or whether it was a careless act, that was not intended to cause a fire, that we don't know. It's progress. <laughs> so the, the park uh, has been under an exceptional drought in recent, uh, in recent weeks. Now in your drought scales, you have a moderate drought, you have a severe drought, you have an extreme drought, and then you have an exceptional drought. Uh, and that is the range where the park uh, was in. The situation had changed overnight. This wind event that we were expecting came in basically 12 hours early. And uh, when we got up to this area here, um, the, the winds were blowing 20, 30, maybe even 40 miles an hour at that point. The entire area was uh, shrouded in, in smoke. It's just, I can't describe to you the feelings that we have over uh, this tragedy and, and especially the, the loss of life. So we have, right now we have, uh, we have 12 folks that we have uh, uh, identified, uh, not identified, we have 12 folks uh, that, that are at the morgue and we, uh, that all of those 12 are disa directly disaster related. Um, but we have one person uh, that, that passed away that uh, not as a direct result of the disaster, but had a heart attack. I think they uh, uh, were fleeing uh, uh, from the fire and ended up, having, ended up having a heart attack. So that's the total of the 13 fatalities that we have to, re, uh, uh, to report to you. Once, once we're in the recovery mode on this system, and I know uh, uh, Mayor uh, Werner and, and City Manager 
uh, Ogle and the chiefs, all the chiefs involved, the sheriff, the highway suit, all of us, we're, uh, and, and I, uh, the emergency uh, folks uh, will sit down and evaluate uh, what went on and, and how it can be improved. It's even colder than usual in Alaska right now, and the continental 48 states are about to get a taste of that. A buildup of cold air over Alaska has been causing temperatures to plummet far below average. Now, that cold air is set to migrate south. Meteorologists estimate it will reach the continental U.S. by next week. That's probably going to cause temperatures to drop. The National Weather Service estimates almost every state west of Ohio stands a greater than 33% chance of seeing their temperatures dip. The Cooperative Institute for Precipitation Systems says the cold air mass should thin out as it rolls east across the 48 states. Lately, Stephen Hawking has been less focused on scientific breakthroughs and more worried about warning people what the future of Earth could be if it continues on the present trajectory. The Guardian published a letter from Hawking where he warned that recent divisive votes like the election of Donald Trump and the UK's decision to leave the EU are backlashes against growing inequality across the world. In the letter, Hawking argues that now is the time to come together to support the poorest among us by working together as a global community instead of insulating ourselves in nationalism as Brexit and Trump aim to do. Hawking is worried isolationism will make it more difficult to address issues like climate change on a global scale. He writes, we now have the technology to destroy the planet on which we live, but have not yet developed the ability to escape it. The renowned astrophysicist did say he was hopeful that humans would be able to figure out a way to travel to Mars or other suitable planets before that happens. 
He said that automation in factories is unavoidable at this point, but will lead to higher income inequality and that people who used to hold manufacturing jobs will need to adapt to more mechanization in the working world. One decision taken at the European Union level has proved unpopular with some solar power companies in the UK. Half a million solar panels were installed every day around the world last year. Lower costs mean the capacity to generate electricity from renewable sources has overtaken coal for the first time. We have main engine start. To the casual eye, it looked like a flawless launch. The Russian Progress spacecraft taking off from Kazakhstan, headed for the International Space Station. Now the Russian space agency saying the unmanned cargo ship was destroyed at an altitude of about 120 miles about six minutes after liftoff when ground control teams lost radio contact with the rocket. Tons of thrust from its first stage engine. NASA's mission control in Houston was covering the launch live on its network and said the first minutes of the flight appeared normal and then... Telemetry became a bit ratty and uh, the progress uh, uh, apparently is in uh, a preliminary orbit. What orbit that is is not known at this point. Progress was carrying some two and a half tons of food and supplies to the space station for the six-member crew. NASA says the crew have enough supplies for several months and are in no immediate danger. But Thursday's launch was the fourth failed cargo run to the station in the past two years. Europe's biggest poultry breeder, France, has detected its first case of a highly contagious bird flu strain on a duck farm. The virus killed nearly half of a 5,000-strong flock in the southern Tarn region. The remaining birds will be culled as a preventative measure. The outbreak comes just days after the virus was found among wild birds in northern France and is the latest in a series across Europe. France is still recovering from a severe bird flu epidemic in its southwestern region earlier this year, which led to a total halting of duck and geese output and import restrictions from trading partners. The World Health Organization says the number of suspected cholera cases in Yemen has skyrocketed to nearly 8,000 within two months. Official sources say 90 cases of cholera had been confirmed by November 17th, and 7.6 million people are at risk. Classes are canceled tomorrow at a Cranston Elementary School after more than 100 students were absent today. Gladstone Elementary reported a large number of norovirus-like illnesses today. The Department of Health is now investigating. Norovirus is very contagious. It's transmitted from an infected person, contaminated food, water, or surfaces. The psychedelic drug in magic mushrooms has been found to help treat anxiety and depression in cancer patients. The substance psilocybin, also called shrooms, is illegal in the United States. If the federal government approves the treatment, psilocybin will be administered in clinics by specially trained staff. The treatment has had successes so far. Dinah Baser experienced a terrifying hallucination on the drug that rid her of the fear of her ovarian cancer returning. Estelin Walkoff says the drug led her to the start of a spiritual journey.
I'd rather lose than win the way you guys did. No, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. Yeah, no, you wouldn't. Yes, yes. No, That's very clear today. No, you wouldn't, respectfully. Absolutely. Do you think I ran a campaign where white supremacists had a platform? You gonna look me in the face and tell me that? It did. Killian did. Really? Oh, and that's how you lost. It did. Oh. Do you think you could have just had you a decent message for the white working class voters? Do you think this woman who has nothing in common with anybody? I'm not anybody, saying that's what you won, but that's the kind of campaign that was run. Over yes. 200. How about it's Hillary Clinton? She doesn't connect with people. How about they have nothing in common with her? People are constantly telling me and telling you to reduce our expectations. Those people are fools. They're fools. We have so many problems to fix in our country. But I know that if we set aside our differences, and we do have differences, we're a very divided nation, but we're not going to be divided for long. I've always brought people together. I know you find that hard to believe. Although this group probably doesn't find it hard to believe. For too long, Washington has tried to put us in boxes. They separate us by race by age, by income, by geography, by place of birth. We spend too much time focusing on what divides us. Now is the time to embrace the one thing that truly unites us. You know what that is? America, America. It's America. Because when America is unified, nothing is beyond our reach. I mean that. Remember the Air Force veteran who blasted the rioters crying over the election results? Quit being crybabies. Ain't nothing free. You ain't no slave. You don't get your way. So you act like a two-year-old burning up people's stuff. Well, this morning he's back and fired up again over the leftists burning the American flag in response to the president-elect saying there should be consequences for those who do it. Well, my thing is this, Pete, is, uh, you know, as, an, uh, as a veteran, you know, I fought for that right for you to burn the flag, but it's very offensive. Uh, I'm not Muslim, but I would never burn the Quran um, just out of respect. I think that there's really nothing we can do, but the last time we had unity in this country was right after 9-11, and most of those people out there burning the flag, they don't even remember that. You remember after 9-11, mm -hmm. everybody had American flags and they were all proud of the USA. I don't understand why it has to come to such a tragic event to bring us all together. Images of resistance have dominated the story of the Dakota Access Pipeline. Tanya Stans pours milk of magnesia over her face, relieving the pain after being pepper sprayed by police. She's one of thousands of ordinary people taking on corporate oil and the state of North Dakota. Stop the pipeline. Stop the pipeline and, and fracking. It's polluting the water. Stans and others do not refer to themselves as protesters. Instead, they see themselves as protectors from the black snake. An 1,172-mile-long pipeline winding its way across four states. The almost $4 billion project is nearing completion, but it needs to go under the water sources of the Standing Rock Sioux Nation. Native Americans have banded together. Our future lies in the knowledge that we are all of one people. That this earth is our mother. Hallelujah. But people of various races and religions and backgrounds are there too. Up we go. Building an entire community. Slow. Chief Arvel Looking Horse is a spiritual leader for the Sioux Nation, composed of various Sioux tribes, including Standing Rock. He says the camp called Ocheti Sakowin stands for nonviolent resistance. It's all over the world that people are standing to uh, protect whatever good water we have left. There are people at the big camp from around the country and the world. These flags represent 300 separate groups of indigenous peoples pledging their support. And the people here say they're prepared to weather a frigid North Dakota winter to prove their point.
President Park Geun-hye made an unannounced visit to a fire-ravaged market in her political stronghold of Daegu on Thursday. The visit was her first public appearance in over a month amid the ongoing political corruption scandal. As you know, on November the 22nd, approximately 4 a.m., we responded to a call for an explosion at 1808 Pine Street. They were met by a 60-year-old resident who had sustained injuries to his face, torso, and hands. Um, the victim had indicated he had received the package that Sunday. Um, he didn't open it until that, that time in question, uh, but when he did, unfortunately, it did explode, as I indicated. Right now, uh, the victim does not appear to know who would want to harm him. Uh, we have uh, had extensive conversations with him uh, and continue to do so. Um, we do have, however, a video as well as some still photos depicting a person of interest. Uh, as the battle for Mosul intensifies, the UN says nearly half a million of the Iraqi city's civilians are facing a catastrophic drinking water shortage. UNICEF reports an important water pipeline has been destroyed in an inaccessible part of the ISIL-controlled city. As ISIS retreated from this territory, it transformed the landscape into this apocalyptic vision. The group blew up and set fire to 19 oil wells near the town of Gayara. We don't know the motivation. More ruthless, vengeful destruction, or perhaps the hope it would provide cover from air power above. The fires have burned since August, lowering the sky, concealing the sun, layering the earth and people's lungs with toxic black filth. The heat coming off this fire, it is incredible. It's melted much of the ground around the well. The air, it is thick and foul. It really tastes terrible. It makes your eyes water. And this is the poisonous atmosphere that people in this part of Iraq have been breathing in and living with for months. There's now a desperate effort to fix the wells, but lead engineer Itklaf Mohammed tells me it's a difficult, complex process. want to help one another. Human beings are like that. We want to live by each other's happiness, not by each other's misery. We don't want to hate and despise one another. In this world, there's room for everyone, and the good earth is rich and can provide for everyone. The way of life can be free and beautiful, but we have lost the way. To those who can hear me, I say, do not despair. The misery that is now upon us is but the passing of greed, the bitterness of men who fear the way of human progress. The hate of men will pass and dictators die. 
and the power they took from the people will return to the people. And so long as men die, liberty will never perish. You have the love of humanity in your hearts. You don't hate, only the unloved hate, the unloved and the unnatural. In the 17th chapter of St. Luke it is written, the kingdom of God is within man, not one man nor a group of men, but in all men, in you, you the people have the power. Then in the name of democracy, let us use that power, let us all unite! And in time of domestic crisis, men of goodwill and generosity should be able to unite regardless of party or politics.